I'm here at AQS Quilt Week Fall Paducah and I'm here with Barbara Oliver Hartman and Barbara entered two quilts in the show and they both were juried in and one was a prize winner. Yes. Uh, and this is your second quilt. This is in the Wall Quilts Pictorial sponsored by Tin Lizzie category. Yes. And uh, I'm intrigued with your technique on doing this and I thought people out there might like to know okay. about it too. All right. So you call this slivers and bits. Yes. And the most unique thing about it, you tell me, is that you use no fusible mm -hmm. and no netting over the top. Correct. So how on earth do you tie down all of these slivers and bits? Very carefully. <laughs> it's, um, it's a technique that I've kind of designed and used over the years that has changed and, you know, has become more uh, it's a style yes, of quilt that you've yes. made several of, isn't yes, it? Yes, I've been doing this with the little bits and pieces for uh, over 25 years. I started in 92. Wow. And, um, and it was on an art quilt, and it was kind of an accidental thing, uh, taking raw edge pieces of fabric and uh, putting them on the quilt. I use a free motion zigzag stitch when I'm doing this, and it's, you have to be very careful. I work in an area about this big at a time. A six inch circle or probably, so? Probably, okay. probably about like that. Uh -huh. uh, but what the process is, the thing that gives me the most satisfaction is all of this is made from fabrics that would end up in the landfill. Because I take all of my scraps from all the other quilts that I do and I have massive amounts. I, when I have a whole lot, a couple of tubs worth, I'll grade them out by color. And then I just take a rotary cutter and I cut them into little fine pieces and they're about the size of my little finger nail. Mm -hmm. And then I put them in bags and I treat them like paint. And they're my paint. So when I need certain colors or if I'm doing a certain design, I kind of build it from the back front like a painter would do. Mm -hmm. And they start with the background and I <coughs> prepare that. And then I'll put the trees in, I'll start putting the foliage <coughs> in. And by the time I get through, I usually have about three to five layers over the wow. whole surface of the quilt. Now, the one question I had for you is that since you don't fuse it, and and you really are not using traditional cotton fabrics that are two si that are one side's light and one side's dark. Exactly. Most of all of the quilts I work with are hand dyes and batiks, so that it doesn't matter which side. You can use it's either very. Side. I've tried a few times just because I like the color of something to or had some left over that were prints, and they just don't work quite as well. So I really try to use the, and it's not hard for me to do because that's mostly what I have are the hand dies and I just work I just I try not to sneeze because they'll go all over the place and uh, usually I end up wearing a lot of them and uh, but yeah I just work in a small area and it's it's really pretty tedious and time-consuming but it's so addictive sometimes I just lose myself you know I just start sewing and don't well, it's leave. a really interesting technique, and I thought you all would like to share in that technique. And, you know, maybe you want to try it on a small piece first. Oh, absolutely. No, yes. it just always, no matter what kind of quilt you're going to do, always start with a small piece, <laughs> no matter what kind it is. Yes. All right. And so we hope that you'll join us at AQS Quilt Week. And thank you, Barbara, for sharing this technique with us. Thank you for asking.